Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to be talking about volumes of revolution, specifically the disk method. Here's the big idea. We can take an area under a curve and rotate that around the x-axis. This will form a solid of revolution. If we want to find the volume of that solid, we need to look at this from the perspective of little rectangular strips that have been rotated around the x-axis to form disks. For each disk, the radius is f of x and the thickness is dx. Note that the disk is perpendicular to the x-axis. Now we just need to find the volume of an individual disk and then find the sum of the volumes of an infinite number of disks. Let's let the volume of one disk be called dv, and dv equals pi r squared times dx. That's the area of the circle times the thickness dx. But we can substitute in f of x for r. That means dv equals pi f of x squared times dx. The volume of the entire solid is the sum of the volumes of an infinite number of disks on the interval a, b. We can express this as v equals pi times the integral from a to b of f of x squared dx. Note that pi can be brought outside the integral because it's a constant. Let's do an example problem. Find the volume of the solid formed by rotating the function y equals x squared around the x-axis on the interval 0, 3. In this case, the radius of each disk is f of x, which is x squared. That means dv equals pi x squared squared dx. Remember, dv is the volume of one disk. So the volume of the entire solid is pi times the integral from 0 to 3 of x squared squared dx. And we can simplify this to pi times the integral from 0 to 3 of x to the fourth dx. Now we can solve this using the fundamental theorem of calculus. And that gives us pi x to the fifth over 5 evaluated from 0 to 3. And if we plug in the 3 and the 0, we're going to get pi times 3 to the 5th over 5 minus 0 to the 5th over 5, which is 243 pi over 5. And that's the volume of the solid of revolution. Let's look at another example, where we rotate rectangular strips within a shaded region around the y-axis to form disks. This would give us a solid of revolution around the y-axis. For each disk, the radius is f of y and the thickness is dy. Note that the disk is perpendicular to the y-axis. And now we can calculate the volume of one disk. dv equals pi r squared dy, but r equals f of y. So dv equals pi f of y squared dy. The volume of the entire solid is then pi times the integral from a to b of f of y squared dy. Let's do an example problem. Find the volume of the solid formed by rotating the region in quadrant 1 above the function y equals x squared and below y equals 2 around the y-axis. In order to do this problem, we need to convert the function y equals x squared into x equals the square root of y. Now we have f of y. So now we can find the volume of one disk, which would be pi times the square root of y squared dy. Then we can find the volume of the solid by adding up the volumes of an infinite number of disks. And the integral lets us do this. So v equals pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of the square root of y squared dy. Note that the limits of integration are y values now because we're adding the volumes of the disks that are stacked horizontally in the y direction. This simplifies to pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of y dy. And then we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to solve and that gives us pi y squared over 2, which we're going to evaluate from 0 to 2. And that equals pi times 2 squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2, which is 2 pi. We got it. That's the volume of the solid of revolution. So let's recap what we've learned. To find the volume of a solid of revolution around the x-axis using the disk method, you need to multiply pi times the integral from a to b of f of x squared dx. Note that the limits of integration a and b are x values, because what we're doing is we're taking an infinite number of vertical rectangular strips and rotating them around the x-axis. This produces an infinite number of cylindrical disks that are perpendicular to the x-axis. And when we find the sum of all the volumes of those infinite number of disks, we have the volume of the solid. To find the volume of a solid rotated around the y-axis, 
you need to multiply pi times the integral from a to b of f of y squared dy. And note that a and b are y values, because what we're doing is taking an infinite number of horizontal rectangular strips and rotating them around the y-axis to produce disks. And when we find the sum of the volumes of the infinite number of disks, we have the volume of the solid. Make sure that you understand these big ideas behind solids of revolution using the disk method. And that's how you rock calculus!